Good morning, everyone. Hey, welcome to Metrolina of Worship at Home. Pastor Dean here. Great to be with you on this Thanksgiving week. It's great to start the week out with giving praise to the Lord and being thankful. Today, we're going to talk about how to build thankfulness in our lives. We're going to sing some songs about thankfulness. We're going to read some scripture verses about thankfulness today. So it, we're going to have a thankful day as we gather to, together this morning. So thank you for joining with me. We, got a, we have a special guest who will be making an appearance in just a moment, reading some scripture for us. So this is going to be an exciting day, and I'm so thankful that you are here to be a part of that. Well, I've got a great video I want to share with you this morning that has some fabulous humor. It's from the skit guys, and it just seems like uh, those guys never fail to produce great videos with humor and a great message. And so I want to share that with you this morning as we jumpstart our Thanksgiving week off with worship and with praise. Enjoy this Thanksgiving video this morning. What does it have to do with Thanksgiving? And why do we have to smack it with a hammer? It's called the peppermint pig. It's a Victorian era tradition. Someone's been watching too much PBS. <laughs> I like the tradition of pie. Mm -mm. This feels lame. Sorry, sis. Now that I'm on the carnivore diet, I cannot eat a pig made of candy. Oh, so you'd rather have a real one? Oh, I'd rather eat a real one right now. Uh, guys, stop. Your mom's getting that look in her eyes. Huh? Yeah, come on, guys. Let her have her perfect Pinterest moment. Is it so bad that I want Thanksgiving to actually mean something this year? Yes. <laughs> no, no. So again, how it works is everyone goes around and takes a turn hitting, <clears throat> tapping, pig with the hammer. And everyone says something they're thankful for. Hmm? And when we're all done, we dump it out and eat the candy. Okay? Candy? Looks more like a bar of soap. Like you know what soap looks like. I saw him wash his hands last week. Just let the figure say something. Okay. Um, I am thankful that Jerry finally dressed appropriately for a family get together. I did go through a tank top era. Yeah, no one wants to see your shoulder hair, Uncle Jer. But welcome to my Crocs era. Oh. Oh. Feet off the table. You don't have so eras, wicked. you're not Taylor. It's so cool. I am thankful for Crocs. Okay. I'm thankful mom didn't burn the rolls this year. <laughs> and I would love to eat all of those rolls, but again, carnivore diet. Mm. I'm thankful because after this pig thing is over, I can go beast mode on this pie. Pass. Wait, we can pass? That's a rule. Wait, am I losing? What? <gasps> okay, see, this is why I do not come to your family game nights. Okay, well. I'm thankful for a family who's willing to do this all over again. Oh. And really consider their blessings. All the blessings our great God has given us. Guys, I'm thankful that God blessed me with a wife who makes family moments special. I'm grateful God gave me some good friends on my basketball team. I am thankful for vegan butter and the mashed potatoes this year because, guys, this is not a phase. Wait, 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 wait. Seriously, that was vegan butter? Oops. Okay, now the reason I'm thankful for pie is because it reminds me of Grandma. I really miss her, but I'm thankful she was my grandma. Well, <clears throat> with that being said, um, it's been quite a year. You all know about <clears throat> my health, my job, my, well, you all know. Thank you for your prayers. I'm grateful for my family. Very grateful to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Okay. 
Yeah, he's ready to eat. Let's talk about the vegan butter. Oh, oh, the vegan butter. That's going to go right through me. It's going to go right through me. All of it. It's going to be so much for all of us. I think we should just run on the All right, yes. Uh, what are you thankful for this morning? So uh, I could list so many things, and I guess one of the things that I'm thankful most for today is uh, my children, and my grandson. This is my grandson, Luke, and I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for all of my grandchildren. In fact, uh, tonight, uh, while we're recording this, uh, I know you're watching it on Sunday morning, but my granddaughter in New York is performing in a musical, The Elf. And so, uh, so much to be thankful for today. And I hope that you could find uh, many reasons to be thankful. But Luke has a passage of scripture that he wants to read for us this morning that will help us to uh, put thankfulness into our hearts and minds. So Luke, share this passage for us today. All right. Psalm 100, a psalm of thanksgiving. Shout with the joy to the Lord, O earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates without, with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is God, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Amen. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. Now let's let's uh let's all continue to be thankful this morning. Let's give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Let's worship and give Him thanks in song today. a grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One Give thanks Because He's given Jesus Christ His Son And now Let the weak say I am strong Let the poor say I am
things You give things You give things You give things With a grateful heart Give things To the Holy One Give thanks Because He's given Jesus Christ His Son Give thanks
Uh, amen, amen. That is uh, such a beautiful, beautiful song. And um, it just stirs the heart, doesn't it? I'm just a little speechless here uh, as I think about uh, the, the beauty of that song and, and, um, and all that we learned um, from it. It talks about uh, throwing throwing up our hands and singing hallelujah, and we're going to find out today uh, from uh, an old an Old Testament um, definition of the word thankfulness that uh, it it actually means the word thankful in the Old Testament actually means to to hold up one's hands, and I just love the fact that that song brings brings that truth out. Um, uh, we, we, ho- we throw up our hands and sing hallelujah. We ho- throw up our hands and, and give thanks to the Lord. And, and you know, as, as you think about that, it's kind of what a child does, right, to a parent. Uh, uh, you know, when, when they're little, they come running to mom and dad with their hands held up. And that's the attitude, right, the spirit and the attitude of a thankful person. And on this Thanksgiving week, I want us to talk about how to build thankfulness into our lives, um, how to grow in thankfulness, um, even when things are um, not so good. Can we find room for thankfulness during the difficult circumstances of life? And we're going to see from Scripture today that we absolutely can. So we're going to dive dive into that together here this morning as we talk about as we talk about, um, I'm having a little bit of a, there we go. I've, I've finally found the right button. We're going to uh, talk about building a life of thanksgiving, building a life of thanksgiving. And I want to give you five things, five biblical things that you can do. The Bible teaches us about thankfulness that we can uh, practice in our lives to build a thankful life and to, and to build a life that is not just giving thanks one day a year, but a life that is day in and day out expressing uh, thankfulness and how we can live in a spirit of thanksgiving uh, throughout every day of our life. So we're going to look at those five principles on how to do that this morning, these five biblical principles. So let's, uh, let's jump into that. And um, before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to speak to us this morning. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Uh, Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for all that you bless us with. We're thankful, um, Lord, uh, even in the, in the difficult times, because we know that uh, you are a shepherd. Uh, we know, Lord, that even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we, we, we can fear no evil because you're with us. Uh, we know, the Lord, that you, you uh, make us lie down in, in green pastures. You lead us beside still waters. You restore our souls. And, Lord, you... Um, prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You, you anoint our head with oil. You take care of us. You care for us. And, and so, Lord, even, even, in the, even in the difficult circumstances of life, we can find reasons to give thanks because if we know the Lord Jesus Christ, then, then no weapon formed against us can prosper we know that in Christ, we're, we're more than conquerors. 
And Lord, we're victorious because of Jesus and nothing can take that away from us. Nothing can rob us from that truth. And so, Lord, we have every reason to be thankful this morning. Help us, Lord, to acknowledge that and to find freedom in being people of thankfulness. Speak to us today, Lord, as we open your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's, let's jump into these five principles about how to, how to build thankfulness into our lives, how to become a person of thankfulness. Of thankfulness. First of all, uh, we have to choose every day to be thankful. We have to choose. As you see, thanks, thanksgiving or thankfulness is a choice. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, uh, God's Word says, Be thankful in all circumstances. Be thankful in, in all circumstances. I, I like that. In all the circumstances. And because of Christ Jesus, every circumstance I can find a reason to be thankful because I'm in the hands of an almighty God that loves me with an everlasting love. So that's what 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And so we see verses like this and we understand that, that thankfulness is a choice. Thankfulness is, is a choice, and so I, I choose to be thankful. I choose to give God thanks no matter what the circumstance. So when the, so when the difficulty rolls in, I know we've been talking about this a lot, but it's so important, isn't it, um, is that when the difficulty rolls in, I make a choice. I can't control, often, I can't control the circumstance that comes into my life, Right? We're sometimes it's not it's out of our control. We're in this situation. But I can choose how to respond. I can choose how to react. I can choose to uh, I can choose to complain or uh, I can choose I can choose thankfulness. I can look for I can I can uh, be intentional in looking for a reason to give God thanks. And I, I believe with that comes a great freedom with that becomes a, a, a more uh, joyful spirit and attitude that helps me get through the circumstances and the problems. Uh, Psalm 69, let me, let me bring that uh, text up for you. Psalm 69, uh, verses 29 and 30, uh, just beautiful in explaining this truth. So the psalmist says here, uh, I am afflicted and in pain. Let your salvation, O God, set me on high. So you notice the, uh, uh, the order there, right? I, I'm hurting, God. I'm hurting. But when I think about your salvation, if, when I think about what you do, your rescue, your salvation, your redemption, when I, when I set my mind on that rather than uh, uh, the, the stormy sea around me, uh, God, you set me on high. Uh, your salvation, O oh God, sets me on high. I will praise, listen to the choice here. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify Him with thanksgiving. And so we see uh, this psalmist teaching this great principle about how to build thankfulness in our lives. It, I have to choose to be thankful. I develop a spirit of thanksgiving by deciding, by willing, by acting with intentional gratitude. In the face of all circumstances, I can make a choice. Uh, as the psalmist said in Psalm 145, uh, I can make a choice to say, Every day I will bless you, O Lord, and praise your name forever and ever. Do you hear the choice in that? So as I want to build thankfulness into my life, then I need to make a choice to be thankful in the midst of all circumstances to look for that reason, to look to the salvation that God provides, as this verse says. And when I think about that in the midst of my circumstance, God lifts me up and sets me on high. I choose to be thankful. The second step that we can take, the second principle that we can take about about 
uh, building a life of thankfulness is not only do I choose to be thankful in every situation and every day, but I need to develop habits of being thankful, uh, de- develop habits of being thankful. So uh, a great verse on this is found in Philippians chapter 4, very fa- fam- famous verse, very familiar verse, Philippians 4, 11 through 13, that says, the Apostle Paul writing here, Philippians, um, writes this in prison, and it's this um, this proclamation of, of joy and rejoicing and thankfulness throughout this prison a letter. And he writes these very famous words. Uh, everybody loves verse 13 when people have it tattooed on their arms. Uh, uh, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, right? Athletes put it on their eye black. Uh, we love this verse, but what I, what I think we need to understand is this is in the this is in the context of suffering and of difficulty of adverse circumstances. Uh, it's not to it's not to win a game, uh, but it's to have the a thankful attitude and a thankful spirit during the dif- difficult circumstances of life. So the apostle Paul writes here, and he says, "I have learned to be content. I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstances." I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And so he's giving us these powerful principles here about building a, a life of thanksgiving uh, through learning to be content, learning to give thanks in every situation I find myself. And so uh, one of the first phrases that he uses there, as you see in this passage, I've, I've, uh, I've um, put in bold two words, the words learned and the words content. Uh, they're both used two times in this passage, so it's significant, right here, right. So the word, the word there, learned. I, I have learned. He says the idea here is that this um, this attitude of gratitude uh, that the apostle Paul has in prison, this this spirit of contentment, has been developed through the years. It's been developed through repeated experiences. So this is the idea. It's not just learned in one experience, one bad experience. Man, I've learned to be thankful in all circumstances. I mean, it's easy to be thankful when everything is going good. But the Apostle Paul is writing about when when the circumstances are against us, when the circumstances are difficult. He says, I've learned through repeated experiences to be content, to give to be uh, filled with gratitude and thankfulness in the midst of every situation because I know that I'm in the hand of God. And I know that God's causing all things to work together for good to those who love Him. So unfortunately, we don't learn to develop a spirit and attitude of gratitude in a one-time deal, right? It's developed uh, through... um, circumstances, through repeated experiences. So I develop a habit of being thankful over and over and over again, not only in the good circumstances of life, which I should be thankful and give God thanks when things are going good, but even in the bad circumstances of life, I have to practice, I I have to develop a habit of being thankful over and over again. And so that's the word learned here in this text. Now the word content, I've learned to be content. Uh, I've learned the secret of being content. The word content here means to be satisfied. Um, it means to be it means to find my sufficiency not in myself, but to find my to find sufficiency in Christ, not self-sufficient, but Christ sufficient. So he's saying, I've learned, I've developed this this practice, this over and over and over through repeated experiences. I've learned how to be thankful in all circumstances because I know that Jesus is sufficient. 
to meet all my needs according to his riches and glory, right? So it's, it's understanding that, that Jesus is my sufficiency. I don't find sufficiency in self, but in Christ, in Christ alone. So if I have him, if I have Jesus, then, then I, I truly have everything. I can rejoice in the Lord as Paul writes here in Philippians chapter 4. I can rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice because I've developed over repeated experiences this habit of being thankful in all circumstances because Christ Jesus, our Lord, is sufficient to carry me through, to see me through, to help me through each circumstance of life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even in the midst of this sickness, even in the midst of this difficulty, even in the midst of this trial, even in the midst of this suffering, even even in the midst of this trouble, Lord, I know that you're sufficient. I know that you can do all things. You can do all things. I know, Lord, that with you, nothing is impossible. Lord, you are able You are able, able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think and ask or think. So, Lord, I give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are and what you've given me. Do you hear how we go to the Lord in the midst of that circumstance and give him thanks so we can develop this these habits through repeated circumstances of giving God thanks? So the third principle in this uh, uh, lesson today uh, is to always express thankfulness in worship. How do, I, how do I develop, how do I build thankfulness, a spirit of thanksgiving into my life, no matter what the circumstance? Well, I, I always express thankfulness, or I should always express thankfulness in worship. Now, earlier I told you when we sang the song Gratitude, I throw up my hands and I, uh, I sing hallelujah, I give God thanks. Well, that comes directly from the Old Testament. The, the two words uh, from the Hebrew language in the Old Testament that are translated thankfulness or thanksgiving, uh, they, they both of those, there's, there's two different words that are translated into the English word uh, thankfulness from the Hebrew. And they both both literally or are mostly mean the same thing. They mean to they mean to hold out the hands, to hold out the hands. And they're almost always used in the context of worship. And so when we read, especially through the Psalms, now if we uh, wanted to take the time to do this today, we could, in fact, I've probably got 15 or 20 Psalms uh, that I put in my notes, we're not going to read all the just a couple of those psalms tonight, but um, but there's so many psalms filled with thanksgiving. They're all they're all in the context of worship. Let's let's look at a couple of them. Psalm Psalm 100 and Psalm 136. Uh, just read through those psalms. And Luke actually read one of those psalms for us uh, uh, this morning. So. Uh, Psalm 136 says, Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, the God of gods. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to Him who alone does mighty miracles. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to Him who made the heavens so skillfully. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to Him who placed the earth among the waters. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to Him who made the heavenly lights. His faithful love endures forever. The sun to rule the day. His faithful love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule the night. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His faithful love endures forever forever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord. And so we should always, every day, express thankfulness to God in worship. We should shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. We should worship the Lord with gladness. We should come before Him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. 
We are his people, the sheep of his pasture, as Luke read. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. Amen. And so we should we should always express thankfulness in worship. If I get into the habit of, of expressing thankfulness to God every day in worship, then it will generate within me this this attitude of gratitude, this spirit of thanksgiving that lasts 365 days a year. That's what God can give to those who worship Him in thankfulness every day. The fourth uh, the fourth principle that we learn about developing thankfulness in our lives is to always to always pray with thankfulness. So always worship with thankfulness every day, and always pray with thankfulness. So, uh, is that something a habit that you find yourself doing? Uh, in your prayers is that our prayers consist of giving God thanks. We should enter, as the psalm said in in 100 that that Luke read for us, we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We should enter into the gates with thanksgiving. And so for us today, uh, there's not a physical temple that we go to, but we go directly to God through prayer. And so we should enter into his presence. We should enter into the gates of the throne of God, which was made possible through Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Jesus provided the way for us to come boldly to the throne of grace. And when we do so, we should come with thankfulness. And when you read uh, the, the, the letters of the Apostle Paul to the churches Uh, The church of Colossae, as you see here, the church at Philippi, the church in Ephesus, um, uh, the church in Thessalonians. There's more passages uh, than we're looking at tonight, but um, all of these different letters that Paul wrote, he is always praying with thankfulness. Colossians 1.3, he says, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Uh, Colossians 1.3, we always thank God when we pray. And uh, to the church at Philippi, he, he writes, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Do you hear that kind of that choice that he's making? The first principle that we looked at, I choose to be thankful. I, I worship in thankfulness. I pray In thankfulness, that's how we develop this spirit of thanksgiving in our hearts. And we can do that this week. Listen, I know that at Thanksgiving and at holidays, families, you know, often come together and there's often conflict in families. And and Thanksgiving can be difficult. Conflict in families um, makes it difficult. Um, A lost loved one makes it difficult. So as we celebrate uh, these um, beautiful holidays, Thanksgiving and then, and then Christmas, there's hurting people. Maybe you're hurting. How do you find, how do you, how do you make, you, make your way through that time? How do you navigate through the, the sense of loss and grief uh, during the holiday season? during the Thanksgiving and Christmas season? How do you navigate through family conflict? Uh, It's not easy, friend. I understand that. I understand that every year, every year, uh, we gather around the table and there's missing seats. How do you navigate through it? How do you navigate through the loss? How do you navigate through the conflict? You navigate through through it by being uh, a person of thankful prayers. Lord, even though there's conflict, even though there's hurting, even though there's loss, even though, Lord, there's grief, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for family. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the memories, the memories of the one that I've lost. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I give you thanks. And that see, that changes me. It changes me when I pray like that. It takes me out of the, uh, the, the gloom and despair, um, the, the struggle and difficulty. It takes me, it lifts me out of that pit, you see. And it places me 
uh, on that higher on that higher plane. Amen. And so that's what Thanksgiving does. And so I want to always pray with thankfulness. And when you're praying for others, pray with thankfulness. Listen, listen to these verses from Ephesians. Powerful, powerful verses of prayer uh, of thankful prayers. So the Apostle Paul writes here to the church at Ephesus, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I haven't stopped giving thanks for you. And so if I want to develop a spirit of thanks, thankfulness and thanksgiving in my life, then I need to pray with thankfulness. I need to pray in thankfulness. I need to pray for others with with thankfulness, giving God thanks. And that uh, lifts me up out of those difficult circumstances, and it sets me uh, on the on the on the on the high, um, beautiful uh, mountain slopes of the peace of God. When I pray with the spirit of thanksgiving, uh, so there's a last principle that I wanted to share with you, with you all this morning. A last principle about how how to build uh, thankfulness into our lives, and and. I think this one is the key. Uh, this fifth one is the key to um, to this um, um, developing of thankfulness in our lives, and it's to it's to deepen our roots in Christ Jesus. To deepen our roots in Christ Jesus. So we're just talking about praying um, for others with a spirit of thanks, thankfulness. We're talking about worshiping in thankfulness. Uh, we're given all these things, and we might be asking, but you just don't understand. You, you just don't understand, uh, Pastor. You don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand the difficulty that I'm facing. You don't understand um, the, uh, you know, I have to go into this into this um, um, place of, of uh, hurt feelings or this place of, 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 of separation or this place of, of um, anger or difficulty. Uh, even animosity. I've got to go into this environment. Pastor, you just don't understand. You don't understand um, what I have to go through. I can't believe, you know, I would expect be expected to be thankful in these circumstances. I mean, how is it possible? I just don't, I just don't understand how it can be expected for me to be thankful in these circumstances. Well, the, the way that you do that, and once again, I say to you, I know it's not easy to do. That's why we need Christ. Christ enables us to do. The Lord Jesus Christ, working through the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ that dwells within us as children of of God. He enables us. Listen, when I'm yielded to the Spirit of God, when I'm under His control and more concerned about living for His glory than I am living for self, uh, when 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 uh, when I have my eyes on Christ then the the Holy Spirit of God works in me to enable me to do what I cannot do in my own strength. And so in order to be a person of thankfulness in all circumstances, I need to deepen my roots in Christ Jesus. I I need to put down deeper roots in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 and 7 show us. Uh, So the Apostle Paul writing here to the church at Colossae, he says, So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, constantly rooted in Him, and constantly built up in Him, constantly strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. So do you hear what that verse is saying there? Let me let me pull that up. I want you to see those words, not just hear those words. Let's look at those words. This is this is taken from the amplified version and what the amplified version does is it takes um, verbs in the original language and it and it amplifies them. It gives um, more of the meaning. It gives the tenses of those words. So uh, not just rooted and built up in him, 
But the tense of that verb rooted means to be constantly rooted in him and to be constantly built up him in him and to be constantly strengthened in the faith and overflowing with thankfulness. So do you see what it says there? Is that um, if I am, if I deepen my roots in Christ Jesus, if I am, if I'm deepening by faith in Christ, I'll be strengthened in the faith. I'll be, I'll be built up in, in the faith and I will overflow with thankfulness. So if I want to be a thankful person in all circumstances, then I have to deepen, deepen, deepen my roots in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way, friend. No, you can't do it in your own strength. I know that you uh, can't, it's so difficult to get through whatever it is you're facing. This is Thanksgiving week, and you may be suffering. You may be hurting. You may be feeling betrayed or abandoned. You may be lonely. I understand. I understand. I pray that God would encourage you today. But how, how do you find that encouragement and hope if that's true in your life, you find it by deepening, deepening your roots in Jesus. You dive in deeper to Jesus. And the deeper you go with Jesus, the more that He will produce this overflowing thankfulness in your heart that will, that will rise to the surface, especially in the difficult times, in the difficult seasons of life. It's the product of, of the Holy Spirit is, is what is produced in the man or woman who puts down deep roots in the Lord Jesus Christ. Go deeper with Jesus. So the, the beautiful imagery of this is found in Psalm 1. Psalm 1, this beautiful image of this truth. Psalm 1, verses 2 and 3 says this, Blessed is the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord whose delight is in the law of the Lord, God's Word, who meditates on His law day and night. So look, do you hear it? Man, they're going deep with God. They're going deep with the Lord Jesus Christ, going deep into God's Word. My delight is in the Word of God. I meditate on the Word of God day and night. Man, that's how I go deeper, right? I go deeper, 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 deeper in my walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what that psalm says says, Psalm 1 verse 3, that person, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. It's, a, it's the person, it's the person who puts down those ever deepening roots in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, in that Psalm, Jesus Christ is that rich well-watered soil. Jesus is life. Jesus is beauty. Jesus is blessing. And when I'm connected to Him, just as Jesus said in John 15, if I'll abide in Him, He will abide in me. So when I'm connected to Him, when I've, when I've put down ever-deepening roots in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm connected to Him, and I draw my, my strength from Him. I draw joy from Him. I draw thankfulness from Him. His life is flowing through me. His power is flowing through me. And He enables me to do things, to, to love and to pray and to worship and to forgive and to, and to give thanks in all circumstances. He, he allows me to do things which I cannot do in my own strength. So I've got to put down those deep roots. Amen. Put them down. You see, I grow, I grow in thankfulness when I'm firmly and deeply connected to Jesus. The deeper my connection to Christ, the greater my spirit and attitude of gratitude and thankfulness. See, thankfulness in my life in all circumstances is directly related to my life with Jesus. You know, they tell us that with, with trees, the general rule is that the visible 
spread of the branches equals the invisible spread of the roots. And so the deeper and the more widespread my roots in Christ, the greater the beauty and the blessing of thankfulness in my life. Do you want to be a person of thankfulness and thanksgiving every day of your life? Then make sure today that you are deeply rooted in Jesus and He will do in your life what you could never do in your own strength. Give Him thanks. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for this word. Lord, thank you for teaching us and providing for us, enabling us, empowering us to do what we find it impossible to do in our own strength. Lord Jesus, make us people of thanksgiving. Help us to be thankful in all circumstances, Lord. Help us to put down ever-deepening, growing roots in Christ Jesus so that what is produced is a life of thankfulness and gratitude and joy and peace and blessing. Do that in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Are you deeply rooted in Jesus? Thank you for joining with me this week. I hope that you have a very thankful Thanksgiving. Put those roots, those roots down in Jesus. Pray and worship and choose to be thankful in all circumstances this week. May the Lord bless you. Blessings.